Vano returned home, along with Sharon, of course. Sharon could stop feeling worried seeing the wound on Vano's hand. Luckily, it wasn't blistered. Van, let me treat your wound, Sharon said when they arrived home. Just as they reached the living room, BSI came over to Sharon and Vano. She told them about Rivon, who had fallen ill again, but refused to be examined by a doctor and did not want to take medicine. Hearing that, Vano smiled amusedly. Papa must have been waiting for you. Go and see Papa, Vano said. Sharon looked at the young man with worry, but Vano tried to reassure her. I can treat this wound alone. Sharon gave a small nod at that. Then she ran, heading for Revan's room. Venel, who saw that, couldn't help but smile. It was nice to see Sharon worried about her father. Inside the room, Reven had been waiting for Sharon's arrival since earlier. He hadn't touched the food and medicine that Biasai had prepared earlier. Revan faithfully waited for Sharon, who said she would come to him. Why didn't you eat earlier? You waited for me for a long time, Sharon said irritably. Revan laughed at that. It was on purpose? Revan replied. Sharon shook her head softly at that. However, she couldn't help but smile at Revan's childlike behavior. After Revan sat down, Sharon immediately fed Revan painstakingly. She laughed when she saw some vegetable residue on Ravon's lips and immediately cleaned it up. I didn't expect you to be this spoiled, Sharon said. She put Ravon's leftovers on the tray. Then she sat back down on the edge of the bed, looking at her lover who was again attacked by a common fever but was asking for mercy. Who else would I be with if not you? Mom likes to nag me when I'm like this, Ravon said. He pulled Sharon's hand, bringing her closer to him. Yes, Mom will nag you. You're not a kid, Sharon said happily. She laughed as she gently pinched the back of Ravon's hand. Basically, Sharon was even happy that Revan was spoiled with her. It indicated that Revan really wanted to be with her. Who are you here with? Revan asked, remembering his conversation with Sharon earlier via message. With Vano. He went straight to his room, too, Sharon replied. Her hand reached Revan's palm and stroked it lightly, smiling a little, seeing the difference in the size of their hands. He didn't cause any trouble with you, did he? Revan asked. Sharon was silent for a moment, then looked at her lover. She smiled and shook her head. No, he didn't. Vano was very kind to me. He sent me straight here to see Mas. In fact, he's also injured and needs to be treated, Sharon replied. Hearing Sharon's answer, Revan was surprised. Injured? What happened to Vano? Before Sharon could finish speaking, there was a knock on the door. Revan and Sharon's attention was immediately drawn to the door, and Sharon immediately got up to open it. Vano? I want to see how Papa is doing. Sharon nodded and opened the door wide, letting Vano into Rivon's room. How is Papa? Vano asked after standing close to the bed. Sharon had deliberately brought Rivon's work chair for Vano to sit on. What's wrong with your hand? Reven asked after noticing Vano's reddened arm. Ah, uh, this. It was a small incident earlier at the cafe. I put some ointment on it, Dad. Vano replied with a smile. What kind of small incident caused you to hurt your hand like that? Vano was silent for a moment and then glanced at the wound. Then Vano sighed softly. Sorry, Dad. It's all because of Mama. Vano replied softly. Ravon's eyebrows furrowed at that. I feel ashamed of Sharon then, Pa. Vano chuckled with his head down. Revan exhaled softly at that. It's good that you already know. Revan said. He didn't know. It felt like he was relieved that Vano already knew about the real Dilla, without him telling him. I'm sorry that I only understand now, Father. I will support all of Papa's decisions. Vano continued. Reven smiled at that. I'm sorry Papa hasn't been straightforward with you about Sharon. Ravan smiled at that. That's okay. I already know that. And I'm glad that Papa found the right person. Meanwhile in the kitchen, Sharon was helping BSI washing the dishes from Ravon's meal earlier, while B.S.C. was sweeping. B, has Cinda been here again? 
Not yet, none. The last time she was here was on young master's birthday. Thiasai replied. Sharon nodded slowly at that. You've worked here a long time? Five years old, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, it's been a long time. Yes, yes. While Sharon was busy chatting with BSI, someone came into the kitchen. The person called out Sharon's name, making Sharon and BSI's attention turn to him. Vianen! I asked you to leave my father's life. Why are you even here? Asked Vian. Sharon was silent at that. Your father is sick, Vian. So I came here to take care of him. You really want to get in the way of my parents' union. Vian, it's not like that. You... What else? What else? You don't know how your mother really is, Vian. Don't be a smartass. Vian, listen to me first. Sharon, I'm begging you. Don't be a barrier for my parents to be together. Sharon fell silent at that. He looked straight at Vian. Does your father want to go back to your mother? That's what you should find the answer to first, Vian. You don't know the full extent of what happened between your parents. I don't need your advice, Sharon. Vian looked at Sharon sharply, making Sharon hurt. Was this how much Vian hated her now? To the point of continuing to say words that hurt his heart? You want me to leave? Fine, I'll go. Don't blame me if something happens one day, Sharon said with a trembling voice holding back tears. After saying that, Sharon stepped away from the house. Tears dripped down her cheeks. In the end, she gave up. Even though Cinta asked her to stay, even though Vano supported her, Sharon still couldn't stand Vian being rude to her. Let her give in. The important thing was that she would never hear the word that she was an obstacle to someone else's happiness again. Early in the morning, Revan had left home for Sharon's boarding house. He was looking forward to meeting her. He also wanted to apologize for everything Vian had said and done to him. Vano, who saw his father leave in a hurry, immediately got in the car intending to follow his father. Just want to make sure his father manages to meet Sharon. And Vano is also a little worried because his father is not fully healthy. After a few minutes on the road, Revan finally arrived in front of Sharon's boarding house. He parked his car on the side of the road, then got out and walked into the boarding area. Revan knew Sharon's boarding room by heart, as he had come to pick her up several times. When he arrived at the door of Sharon's boarding house, Revan immediately knocked on the door, waiting for the door to open with his heart beating fast, waiting anxiously because Sharon never opened the door to her boarding house. While he was waiting, a girl about Sharon's age suddenly approached Reven. She was a neighbor of Sharon's boarding room. Is Sharon inside? I knocked on the door and it didn't open. Reven said, Ah, Sharon, she just moved out last night, the girl replied, surprising Rivon. Moved? Yes. Last night Sharon came home around 10 p.m. and immediately packed up her clothes. She said she wanted to move in with her father. Her father helped her carry all her belongings yesterday, the girl explained. Revan fell silent with a sudden weakness in his body. All right. Thanks for the information, Revan said. After that, he left. How is it, Dad? Asked Vano. Seeing his father's gloomy face, Vano became worried. Sharon moved out last night. Van, she's staying with her father. Revan mumbled. Vano was surprised to hear that. Did Sharon deliberately move to avoid them all? Go on. You have to go to college. Let Papa find Sharon's whereabouts. Reven said. He patted Vano on the shoulder a few times and then got into his car. Now Reven's destination was the housing estate where his mother lived. Because as far as Reven knew, Sharon's father was a neighbor of Cinta, her mother. So there was a possibility that Sharon lived in that house. Reven's mind was in turmoil. Unable to calm down, he drove a little fast, almost crashing into someone's car several times. Luckily, he made it safely to his mother's yard. After getting out of the car, Revan went straight to Mawar's house. His goal was to find Sharon, and hoped to meet the girl soon. Revan knocked impatiently on the door several times. Not long after, Mawar opened the door, staring at Ravan in surprise. Where's your husband? Asked Ravan Matter. 
A factly. Mawar folded her arms under her chest at that. Throwing a mocking look. What are you doing looking for him? I have business with your husband. Where is he? Revan asked impatiently. Mawar chuckled softly at that. I kicked him out of here. Look for him on the streets. He's probably homeless by now. And get this, he's not my husband anymore, Mawar said with emphasis. After answering Rivon's question, Mawar closed the door firmly, leaving Revan with his empty thoughts. Where did David take Sharon? Rivan walked sluggishly towards his mother's house. Cinta, who had seen Revan's car earlier, was waiting at the doorway. She looked worried seeing Rivan's condition, which was far from good. Rivan, are you sick again? asked Cinta worriedly. She took Reven by the hand, bringing him into the house. Why are you here so early? What are you doing at Mawa's house? Cinta kept asking, curious, but she immediately shut up, seeing Ravon's pale face and the blank look in his eyes. I want to rest, Mom, Reven said softly. Cinta sighed softly. Then she led Reven to the guest room, allowing her son to rest. Actually, she wanted to ask him many questions, but seeing Revan's condition, Cinta should refrain from asking. While on campus, Vano received a message from his father that he couldn't find Sharon. He asked Vano to look for Sharon on campus. Therefore, Vano went around the campus, looking for Sharon. Not alone, Novi and Renata also helped. Novi and Renata admitted that in the middle of the night, Sharon sent them a message telling them that she was moving from her old boarding house to a house that was more livable. Novi and Renata asked Sharon where her new place was and who she was with, but Sharon didn't reply. She only read their messages. Hearing the story from Vano about Sharon and Vian's problems made Novi and Renata realize that Sharon was not only hiding from Vian, but from all of them. Because of this, Novi as Vian's girlfriend feels annoyed at her boyfriend, who can't think any better. Novi tried several times to help Vano give an explanation. But what power her mother's influence is stronger. Finally, Novi kept her distance from Vian, hoping that Vian would soon realize that Sharon was important to his father and the people around him. After wandering around for a while, Vano, Novi, and Renata never found Sharon. They no longer understood how Sharon hid so hard to find, and that made Vano anxious. He was afraid that his father would think about him and his illness would get worse. Damn, Vian, it's all because of him, Vano exclaimed angrily. Novi and Renata both sighed at that. They didn't know where else to look. They didn't know where else to look. They had been to every class Sharon took, and Sharon wasn't there. Van, maybe this is what has to happen? said Novi, trying to calm the atmosphere. What do you mean? asked Vano, not understanding. Sharon's departure made your father sad. I don't want to wish him away. It's just that there might be a change in attitude towards your father towards Vian. So let it go. Let Vian feel the change in Amri Vaughn's attitude towards him so that he realizes how important Sharon is to Revan, Novi explained. Right, we should also let Sharon calm down. She must be hurt by Vian's words. And if possible, we also try to show her how your mother really behaves. Renata continued. Vano ruffled his hair in frustration. What he was really worried about was his father's condition. It's hard to make Vian understand. But with more and more evidence, I hope little by little Vian's mind will open. Novi hoped. Vano let out a rough breath at that. The core of the problem was Vian and Dilla and Vano didn't know what else to do to make Vian understand that their parents would never be together again. Vano, Reven is sick now, right? Asked Novi. Yes, since yesterday he hasn't been feeling well and I'm worried that Papa's illness is getting worse because of the burden of thought, complained Vano. Then let's go see Vian now, suggested Novi. Renata and Vano looked at Novi in surprise. What do you want? They both asked simultaneously. Anyway, let's go see Vian. Novi invited the two of them to look for her boyfriend's whereabouts. Novi had one plan, which she hoped would prove to Vian that his mother didn't deserve to go back to Ravon. Vano, Novi, and Renata found Vian, who was near the library. 
Vian was astonished to see the three people walking towards him. We need to talk, Novi said directly. Vian raised one eyebrow at that. He also realized that his relationship with Novi was starting to deteriorate because of the problems that had occurred. But to Vian, it was no big deal. What? What? Asked Vian. He put on a calm face without feeling guilty about what he had done. And Vana was furious himself to see it. If not in a public place, Vana wanted to give his twin brother one more punch in the face. You know yourself that your father is sick and Sharon is the one who has to take care of him. But why did you kick Sharon out anyway? Novi asked. Via smiled sarcastically at that. Why did you kick Sharon out anyway? You have to. Is she the only one who can take care of your father? Of course not. There are many people who can take care of your father. But one thing you must remember, Omrevan only wants Sharon to take care of him. Novi emphasized her words. Vian immediately looked at his girlfriend sharply. My mom can do it too. That's not... Well, you call mama now and tell her that papa is sick. I want to hear how she responds. Vano said, cutting Vian off. Vian hissed in annoyance and immediately took his cell phone. Contacting Dilla, he turned on the loudspeaker so that Vano, Renata, and Novi could hear his mother's words. Hello, Vian. What's wrong? Dilla's voice was heard on the other side, asking Vian, What are you doing? asked Vian, making small talk. I'm just keeping quiet. What's wrong? Papa is sick, Mom. You can visit Papa, right? Yes, if you can take care of him at the same time. Vian spoke. Dilla was silent for a long time, not replying. It was as if she was thinking, Duh, if it's visiting, let's go. If it's taking care of him, I don't think so. Vian immediately got mocking looks from the three people in front of him. Why, Ma? I'm not busy. Vian, you should take your father to the hospital so he can be treated by the experts. Papa doesn't want to go to the hospital, Ma. He wants to be treated at home. Yes, just hire a nurse then. Your father will be able to pay for it. Mama can't take care of sick people. Vian was silent for a long time hearing that. A sense of disappointment began to creep into his heart, hearing his mother's words that did not match his expectations. All right, Ma. I'll hang up first. After that, Vian disconnected the phone and put a cell phone in his pants pocket. You heard it yourself, right? Mama doesn't want to take care of Papa. I just want to disturb Papa's life, which has been calm and fine. Vano immediately sprayed Vian with annoyance. He still couldn't believe that Vian couldn't digest everything his mother had done. If Mama really wants to reconcile with Papa, Mama should want to take care of Papa who is now sick, instead of looking uncaring like just now. Vano continued. Now, Vian is silent and looks away. He had no more reason to reply to Vano's words. Now Sharon is gone and she moved out of her room. No one knows where she went and it makes Papa sad. Of course you won't care. You have even more faith in Mama who hurt me. After saying that, Vano asked Renata to leave, back to trying to find Sharon's whereabouts. Novi, meanwhile, was still there staring at Vian, who was brooding. Novi approached Vian, then touched his arm, making Vian look at her. Revan has sacrificed his own happiness for ten years in order to raise you and Vano well by himself. So in my opinion, you should now prioritize the happiness of Omrevan, who has been lonely. Novi spoke softly. Vian did not reply. However, the look in his eyes showed that he was disappointed in his mother. Novi smiled a little at that. Hopefully, Vian would understand. Cinta looked sadly at Ravon. Her son refused to eat and take medicine. Revan would just stay in the balcony daydreaming, then go back to sleep in his room. The food that Cinta had prepared was untouched by Ravon, and that made Cinta even more worried as Revan's condition worsened. Cinta had tried to persuade Revan to be examined at the hospital. However, Revan refused. Cinta had intended to call a doctor to examine Revan. However, Revon didn't take any of the prescription medicine from the doctor. Cinta remembered that this was the third time Revon had been this moody. And this time, it was worse than the last time. Revan refused to eat or take his medicine. In fact, Revan didn't talk much. 
Even when Cinta asked Revan to tell her a story, Revan remained silent. Cinta had only one wish. Hopefully Sharon would know Revan's condition and come to see him soon. Cinta was sure Sharon could persuade Revan to eat and take his medicine. But Cinta couldn't contact the girl. And Cinta didn't know if Sharon had left. Cinta only contacted her two grandchildren, telling them that their father was at her house. That's why, after college, Vano and Vian went straight to their grandmother's house. Where's Papa, Grandma? Vano asked. In the guest room. Your father doesn't want to eat or take medicine. He's been daydreaming since he arrived. I'm worried, Cinta replied. She couldn't hide her concern. What exactly has happened to make your papa like this? Cinta asked curiously. She looked at her two grandchildren in turn, watching their reactions. Vian looked down, not answering. Vano, meanwhile, looked at a loss to explain. Grandma, do you know about Sharon? Asked Vano. He was worried that she didn't know about Revan and Sharon's relationship. Grandma was the first to know about your father's relationship with Sharon. Why did Sharon do something? Cinta asked directly. Vano sighed softly at that. Sharon left, Grandma. She moved out of her old boarding house, and I don't know where she moved to. I didn't even see her on campus. Vano replied. Cinta's eyes widened at that. Did Sharon leave Rivan? Yes, but it was also at someone's request. He forced Sharon to stay away from Papa. Vano replied, glancing at Vian. Cinta immediately looked at Vian, who'd been silent. Who forced Sharon away from Rivan? Hmm. Tell Grandma! Cinta exclaimed. Vano looked directly at Vian, letting Cinta know the answer. Cinta clutched her chest, praying to herself trying to contain her rising anger. Vian, why did you do that? Cinta asked in a low voice. She didn't want Vian to feel hurt if she spoke in a sharp tone. Vian remained silent at first. But after a while, he finally opened his voice, answering his grandmother's question. Cinta listened carefully to every word that came out of her grandson's lips. After Vian finished answering, Cinta exhaled slowly looking at Vian and Vano in turn with pity. You are now adults, so I think you should know everything, Cinta said. Hearing that, Vano was confused. Revan would be angry if he knew Grandmother was telling you this, but it's time you knew everything, Cinta continued. After that, Cinta left for her room. Vano and Vian looked at each other for a moment in curiosity. What did they not know all this time? Cinta returned to the living room carrying a sizable bag. She put the bag under the table and began to open it, taking out the contents of the bag one by one. What's this, Grandma? Asked Vano in surprise. Cinta didn't answer, but took out a medium-sized photograph and showed it to her two grandchildren. The photo showed a couple and their two children. One is standing in front of his parents. The other is being carried by his father. That's a picture of Grandma with your late grandfather, Cinta said. Vano and Vian watched carefully. Your father is the one being carried, Cinta continued. Vian and Vano's eyes immediately turned to the child being carried in the photo. Who is he? Asked Vian, not understanding. Grandma actually has two children. My first child's name is Devon, but he died a long time ago. Cinta began her story. Then she pulled out an old-fashioned, worn-out wedding invitation. Read the name of the bride and groom, Cinta ordered. Vano and Vian read it silently. Dilla and Devan. Devin? Nevin? Asked Vano and Vian simultaneously. They immediately looked at Cinta with uncomprehending gazes. How come Devin's name was on the same invitation as their mother's? At that time... Devan was just learning to lead your grandfather's company. Feeling like an adult, he started dating a female intern at the office. Grandma never knew how their relationship was going. Until a few months later, Dilla came home and claimed to be pregnant, said Cinta. Vano and Vian were silent when they heard that. Their hearts were beating fast with bad thoughts already looming. Cinta stared at her two grandchildren, feeling heartbroken. 
However, she had to say this so that Vano and Vian would understand the reason why Revan didn't want to return to Dilla. Even though Dilla hadn't graduated from college yet, the wedding plan was still carried out because Dilla was already pregnant. But unfortunately, two weeks before the wedding, Devan had an accident. His car was accidentally hit by a big car that lost its balance. Sinta's eyes began to tear up as she recalled the tragic death of her eldest son. The invitations have been distributed and all the preparations are 80 complete. The wedding can't be cancelled, especially since Dilla's family is still holding her accountable. Like it or not, Revan had to take Devan's place to marry Dilla. In fact, at that time, he had just graduated from high school. Vano and Vian were stunned to hear that. No wonder they were so close in age to their father. Not to mention, their birth dates didn't match the pregnancy count with Revan and Dilla's wedding date. Apparently, this was the reason. Revan objected, but he tried to accept fate. He was still a teenager at the time, but already faced with heavy responsibilities. He had to be a husband and a father to two twins who were not his children. Sinta's tears broke remembering how miserable Ravon's life had been. She could no longer contain her sadness. Vano's hand holding the invitation shook violently. The big secret about him and Vian that had been kept under wraps was beginning to be revealed, and Vano couldn't help the tightness that filled his chest cavity. The same goes for Vian. Tears were already flowing from his eyes. It hurt, knowing the truth. After you were born, the marriage contract was repeated so that Rivan and Dilla's marriage was religiously valid. Rivan tried to be a good husband and father. Even though Dilla was still heavy from losing Devan, she tried to accept Rivan as a substitute husband and father for you. Sinta wiped away her tears. Continuing the past story about Dilla and Revan that her two grandchildren didn't know. Since you were born, Dilla didn't want to take care of you. She was busy preparing for graduation, and after that she was busy working and busy with her own friends. Dilla left everything to the babysitters without wanting to know how you were growing up. Revan, on the other hand, has always tried to be a good father. Even though he's tired and exhausted, he always tries to look after you both after he gets home from college. Vano and Vian were silent, remembering their childhood. Now they remembered that they had never eaten their mother's cooking. They were never fed by their mother, and even when they went to school, they were never dropped off or picked up. Ravan loves you both. When he divorced Dilla, Ravan didn't remarry because there were many women who wanted him but didn't want to take care of you. Therefore, Ravan decided to focus on raising you by himself, trying his best to be a father. For the 10 years, Ravan was married to your mother. Rivan was tormented. He didn't love your mother, but tried to respect the marriage. Rivan always forgave your mother's mistakes because Rivan didn't want you to lose a mother figure. But unfortunately, Dilla didn't change. Instead, she had an affair and openly said that she was more comfortable with her affair. Cinta cried again as she recounted it all, remembering how Revan had suffered all this time. So I beg you now, I beg you to let Rivan be happy with his choice. Please don't make Rivan choose. Rivan needs someone who loves him. Sinta said, sobbing. There, Vian was the one who felt the most guilty. He was the one who had sent Sharon away. He was the one who made Sharon away. He was the one who made Sharon and Revan separate. And now, Sharon was nowhere to be found. Find Sharon. Revan needs her. Grandmother, please don't let Ravan's illness get worse because of the burden of his thoughts. Vano and Vian were still sitting in the living room, looking at all the photos and things about Ravan's past that were related to Dilla. Pain filled Vano's chest, remembering all the sacrifices Ravan had made for him and Vian, to the point where Ravan put aside his own happiness for the sake of him and Vian. Vano and Vian don't speak, both contemplating. Vian looked even more depressed after learning the truth the fact that he was not Ravan's biological son. Vian smiled sadly, laughing at himself. How stupid he was, forcing Revan to go back to Dilla with the excuse that he wanted to have a complete family. In fact, Revan was not his father. His biological father had died before he was even born. 
A tightness filled Vian's chest as his eyes began to glaze over. He imagined how difficult Ravan's life must have been. As a teenager just out of high school, Revan had to bear the heavy burden of being the husband of his sister's pregnant lover, being a father to him and Vano while his mother neglected their growth. Not to mention Ravan must accept the fate that he is married to an unloved person and try to survive for the sake of him and Vano. Add to that his mother's bad behavior, as well as her betrayal. Vian closed his eyes, with his hands clenched tightly. It was true what Vana said. He was stupid. He couldn't see the drama his mother was creating. He was indeed a fool. Are you satisfied, Vian? Now you look like an ungrateful and ignorant human being. We have been well cared for and loved as our own children. But you're ignorantly destroying Papa's happiness. You really are crazy. Vano cast a sharp glare at Vian, who was faithfully looking down. Papa has been tormented for a long time, even when he was with Mama. And you want Papa to go back to Mama, which means you want Papa to be tortured again like before. You have no heart. Selfish, unable to think about Papa's feelings. Vano couldn't stop talking, letting out all his frustration. Whether Vian was angry or hated him... The important thing was that Vana wanted to finish Vian with his words. Papa is sick and you don't care about what Papa wants. You think about yourself instead. Vian closed his eyes tightly, hearing all of Vano's words. He was angry, but what Vano said was exactly right. Here, he was at fault. He was the one who caused the problem. He was the one who caused the problem. He was the one who made Sharon go somewhere until Revan was sad. Vian's hands were clenched tightly, silently admitting all his mistakes. He then stood up and walked out of the living room. He wanted to see Rivan. He wanted to thank him for taking care of him and raising him with love, even though he was not his biological son. And Vian wanted to apologize for taking the wrong action. He was too stupid and selfish. Vian, where are you going? exclaimed Vano. Vian didn't answer climbing the stairs to the second floor. Finally, Vano ran after Vian. He was sure Vian was going to see Rivan. When Vano and Vian arrived at the door of the guest room occupied by Ravan, they were silent for a while. They heard Revan's conversation with Sinta inside. Why did you tell them? I told you to keep this a secret forever. Rivan, they are adults and should know about all this. It's better for me to tell them earlier than for them to find out from Dilla. You know how that woman is. She could change her story and slander you to them. If they've heard the story from Dilla, they won't believe what I have to say. Vano and Vian looked at each other hearing that, again feeling guilty knowing Revan wanted to hide all this forever, not wanting the two of them to know the harsh reality of the past. Vian shook his head softly and knocked on the door. Soon there was the sound of steps approaching from inside until the door finally opened. I want to see Papa, said Vian. Sinta looked at Vian and Vano in turn, then let them in to see Rivan's condition. Vano, Vian. Concern was evident in Rivan's eyes when he realized that Vano and Vian had heard about their past. Revan was afraid that they would get angry and feel lied to. Revan was afraid that they would leave because they couldn't accept this reality. Vian smiled a little at Revan's concern for him. See, after destroying his feelings, Revan could still feel worried about him. Vian, you're so stupid and evil. Vian approached Revan and immediately hugged Revan. Vian couldn't hold back his tears anymore, crying and continuing to say sorry for being stupid. Revan, despite feeling disappointed in Vian, still tried to calm the young man down. He already considered Vian and Vano as his own children, and because of that, his door of apology would always be open to them. Forgive Papa, too, for hiding all this from you for so long. Revan said. Vano nodded slowly. He noticed that his father was not in a good mood. His face was haggard and gloomy. Surely, he was still thinking about Sharon. Vian didn't speak anymore, still hugging Ravon. In his heart, he promised to help find Sharon. Vian wanted to apologize to the girl and wanted to bring Sharon before Revan. He wanted to make up for all his mistakes. Dad, can I ask you a question? I still don't understand some of Papa and Mama's story. 
Vian said. Rivon smiled at that, allowing Vian to ask. During the ten years of marriage with Mama, how did Papa feel? Asked Vian. Rivon was silent for a moment hearing that. It was a wound for him. But it was okay. He would tell him. You can imagine what it's like to be married to someone you don't love. But Papa tried to accept it. After all, your mother was already his wife at the time. Rivan replied. It's just that many of Papa's principles conflict with your mother, including the issue of children. Your mother refused to give Papa a child on the grounds that pregnancy and childbirth are troublesome, not to mention everything else. The point is, there's a lot of incompatibility. Revan explained. Word on the street is that your mother divorced her new husband for the same reason. Your mother refused to get pregnant and give birth. Her husband, on the other hand, wanted offspring. So, divorce was the way to go. Vano and Vion sighed softly at that. Their mother considered pregnancy and childbirth troublesome. Luckily, while still in the womb, they were not aborted. Never mind. There's no need to discuss it anymore. I'm glad you understand why I don't want to reconcile with your mother. Vano and Vian smiled a little at that. True, Revan deserved to be happy with the person he loved, not go back to the one who made him hurt. Vano and Vian were determined in their hearts that they would always support Revan, and they would never give up on finding Sharon. The search for Sharon continues, and it has now been more than two weeks since Sharon was seen. Vano and Vian and their boyfriends are not tired of trying to find Sharon. They always asked Sharon's classmates, and the answers from them were confusing. Sharon? Apparently, she only comes when there is a class schedule. I asked her once. She said she was busy with something she couldn't leave. Vano seemed to have been so observant when looking for Sharon, but for some reason, he could never find the girl. Is it him who is not good at searching? Or is it Sharon who is very good at hiding? That was the answer from one of Sharon's classmates who was always in the same class as her. After learning about the truth in the past, Vano and Vian still tried to be nice to Dilla, even though she had done a lot. However, Revan always warns them to remain filial sons to their mother. Dilla doesn't accept it when she finds out that Sinta told Vano and Vian everything. She tried to create drama, exaggerating Sinta's story. But now, her two children no longer believed her. Dilla persuaded them to move house and live with her. Unfortunately, Vano and Vian refused. Today, Vano and Vian received news from Dilla's art that their mother was hospitalized. Of course, Vano and Vian panicked and immediately went to the hospital to see how their mother was doing. And apparently, there was no emergency. Her mother only fainted due to a late meal and lack of sleep. The doctor said, nothing serious, Mom. From now on, Mama must be able to take care of her own health. Don't make yourself sick, said Vano. Dilla was silent with sad face hearing that. His two children's worries turned out to be just that. Since arriving, Vian had been silent. Letting Vano talk to his mother, realizing that Vano could communicate better than him. And of course, the incident a few weeks ago was still remembered by Vian, where his mother slandered Reven and made him believe it. You guys haven't changed your minds? You don't want to accompany Mama? Dilla asked with a pleading look. Vano looked at Vian, but Vian looked away. He stood up and asked permission to buy some food first. In fact, it was just an excuse. Now Vian was uncomfortable being in the same room with his mother, and Vian left Vano to face their mother alone. Vian walked leisurely down the hospital hallway. Yes, a little walk and buy some food just so he could have an excuse to stay out longer. When Vian's steps were almost close to the ear room, Vian saw a commotion there. Not knowing what was going on, Vian intended to just pass them by. Mama's satisfied. Are you satisfied now? Look, you've taken care of and raised a murderer, and you're still defending him, who has clearly hurt me, and Papa. Vian's steps stopped when he heard that voice. That voice... Vian recognized it. The voice of the woman he and Vano had been looking for. Finally, Vian turned around, 
staring at the commotion he had just passed. That's right. Sharon was there. And Sharon was crying while scolding an adult woman in front of him. Shut up, Sharon. Anton wouldn't have done that Hugh and your father hadn't stirred up trouble in the first place. It's obvious he wanted to harm me, Mama. But you defended him. Sharon was hysterical, continuing to scold and yell at the woman she called Mama. Vian came closer, wanting to see from a closer distance. His eyes were then drawn to the hand of the woman Sharon called Mama. The woman's hand was raised, as if she was going to slap Sharon. Vian quickly approached and held the woman's hand that intended to hurt Sharon. Who are you? Stay out of my business. Tanya, Sharon's biological mother, snapped and was angry at Vian who held her hand. Vian immediately let go, but still stood in front of Sharon. Hitting your own child is not a good thing, Vian said. Vian blinked softly after saying that. His words didn't feel right. None of your business. Get out of my way. Tanya tried to push Vian away, but Vian stayed where he was. Then suddenly, a man approached. He looked at Sharon Sharpie and looked angry. You insolent bastard. You're trying to slander my son when you're the one making trouble. I'll make sure you and your father go to jail. The man immediately spoke like that. After that, he and Tanya left. After their departure, Sharon's body fell to the floor. She cried again and hit the floor hard. Vian immediately squatted down, trying to calm Sharon down. Sharon, what happened? Sharon didn't answer, still crying. Finally, Vian tried to pull Sharon to sit on a chair. Vian hugged Sharon, trying to make the girl calm down. While hugging Sharon, Vian tried to send a message to Vano that he had met Sharon. Vian let Sharon calm down first, although in truth he was curious. As the minutes passed, Vano and Vian were still accompanying Sharon in front of the E. Vano gave Sharon a bottle of water that he had just bought. Sharon was now calmer, although sadness did not disappear from her face. What happened? Vano asked quietly. Stammering, Sharon told him about the horrible incident a few hours ago. She was at home getting ready to go to college. And somehow Anton, Sharon's stepbrother, came and disturbed Sharon. He intended to harass and hurt Sharon. At that time, Sharon's father, who had just returned from the supermarket, tried to protect Sharon and chase Anton away. But what the hell? Anton stabbed David in the stomach with the knife he was carrying. David had to be rushed to the hospital. What made Sharon even more hurt was that her mother defended Anton and blamed him saying that Anton could not have done that, even though it was clear that Anton wanted to hurt Sharon. Has this case been handled by the police? Asked Vian. Sharon nodded weakly. Already. But I'm not sure that asshole is going to jail. His father would do anything to keep his son out of jail, even if it means spending a lot of money. Whereas my father is just an ordinary employee now. My father doesn't have enough money. Sharon replied weakly. Vano and Vian looked at each other, hearing that. You take it easy, Sharon. We'll try to help you. Vian said. Vian said. Sharon immediately looked up, staring at Vian. She remembered that her last encounter with Vian was not a good one, and Sharon couldn't believe that Vian was now by her side, keeping her company. Now you just pray that your father will be fine and recover soon? Vano said. In fact, David was still being treated inside and they hadn't gotten any news yet. But Sharon did as Vano said, praying that her father would be okay. Sharon was not satisfied to enjoy time with her father. She still wanted to live side by side with her father. She didn't want her father to leave her again. After performing a series of surgeries on David's stab wounds, David was finally moved from the emergency room to the IQ. David has not regained consciousness until now, and that makes Sharon very worried. This case has been handled by the police, and Sharon has also been questioned. However, Anton did not admit to his crime. He said he was trying to protect himself because he was attacked suddenly by David. Sharon had given up when she found out, afraid that Anton would not be punished. However, Vano and Vian contact Revan telling him about Sharon's current predicament. And of course, Rivon would help her. 
Reven is willing to be a witness if he ever witnesses Anton harassing Sharon, even hurting her by strangling her. Unmitigated, Reven would hire a lawyer so that David and Sharon would win in court. It's dangerous if someone like Anton is released. Not only Sharon, there could be other victims later. Are you sick? You should just rest, Sharon said. Her hand touched Revan's cheek, noticing Revan's slightly pale face. It's okay. It's getting better, Revan replied. His hand reached for Sharon's palm and grasped it tightly. They were now sitting on the waiting chairs in front of the ICU room. Just go home. You need to rest. I'm fine here, Sharon continued. It was late, and Revan was still at the hospital. He wasn't alone. He was there with Vano and Vian. All right. I'll be here again, tomorrow. If the police come again, call me immediately, Revan ordered. Sharon nodded. Revan kissed Sharon's forehead, then said goodbye to go home. Sharon waved goodbye to Revan. Not far from her, there were Vano and Vian who had been watching Revan and Sharon's interaction. Vano and Vian approached Sharon and said goodbye too, promising to come see her again tomorrow, and promised to help until the case was solved and Anton was given the punishment he deserved. At the hospital, Sharon accompanied her father alone. Of course, because she was the only family David had. The person who had been cared for and provided for by David for a dozen years did not want to show his face even for a moment. Sometimes, there was resentment in Sharon's heart for her father, who had neglected her since childhood. However, her heart could not continue to hate. At that time, Sharon was walking home to her boarding house after being expelled by Vion from Ravon's house. David, who was riding a motorcycle, stopped and offered to take Sharon home. Although she was not close to her father from the start, Sharon still tried to be reasonable. Apparently, at that time, David invited Sharon to eat at a restaurant. They asked each other how they were doing, and David never stopped apologizing to Sharon, his own daughter, sorry for neglecting, even shirking the obligation to provide for her. Then David took Sharon to the simple house he bought. There, David told Sharon that he had divorced Mawar. The reason for the divorce was because Mawar found out that David often met Sharon secretly, and Mawar didn't like that. Finally, Mawar sued David for divorce. Of course, David lost his business because of Mawar's divorce. However, he had no regrets. He immediately looked for another job and was lucky to be accepted by another company even though he was only an ordinary employee. David bought a motorcycle and a house from the savings he had accumulated, without Mawar's knowledge. And because of that, David looked for Sharon and invited his daughter to live together. Living alone with Sharon made David's heart calmer and more peaceful. Sharon was not spoiled and did her homework without nagging. She treats David like a father who must be respected, never nagging when David forgot to put his shoes on the shelf. He never nagged her when she forgot to hang up her bath towel. While living together, David never forgot to say sorry to Sharon. However, Sharon had already forgiven. The important thing is that now she can be with her father, feeling the love from her biological father. Early in the morning, Vian had come to the hospital, bringing food and a change of clothes for Sharon. He knew very well that his father's girlfriend would not return home to take a shower. He would definitely stay at the hospital, accompanying his father. Sharon was shocked when Vian handed her the food and a change of clothes, especially when she found out that Vian deliberately came there early in the morning because he remembered that Sharon didn't eat last night. Sharon was touched by the attention given by Vian. Although still confused, Sharon accepted it happily. After showering and having breakfast, Sharon sat alone with Vian on the waiting chair. And only now, Vian had time to express his heart, apologizing to Sharon for what he had said. He really regretted his actions. Sharon was happy to hear Vian's apology. He also gracefully forgave Vian. And Sharon couldn't help but smile when Vian said that he had approved of Sharon's relationship with Ravon. I was stupid for trusting my mother too much. It made you and Papa sad. Vian said. Sharon touched Vian's arm and rubbed it gently. It's natural for you to believe your mother's words. It's just that you don't see the other side. This is what happened. 
Sharon replied. Vian smiled and nodded. He didn't expect Sharon to forgive him so easily. He thought she was still angry. You didn't go to campus, Vian? Asked Sharon. Vian immediately looked at his watch. It's going to be a while. Papa will be here with Vano, so I'll go to campus with Vano. Sharon nodded slowly. She then looked into the room occupied by her father. Sharon could see a bit of her father's figure lying weakly on the patient's bed, no sign of regaining consciousness soon. You didn't go to class? Vian asked. Sharon looked at Vian, then shook her head slowly. I think I'll take some time off until my father regains consciousness. You see, my father has no family other than me, so there's no one to take care of him. Vian was silent when he heard that. He felt even more guilty hearing it. Sharon had lived a difficult life all this time, almost abused by her stepbrother and her mother defending the suspect, not to mention what Vian had done all this time. You be patient, Rin. Hopefully your father will wake up soon. Vian tried to be encouraging. Sharon smiled and nodded. Yes, for now she just had to be patient and not stop praying for her father's recovery. Reven comes to the hospital with Vano to see how Sharon and her father are doing. Revan also intends to accompany Sharon. Poor Sharon was alone. Have you had breakfast? Sharon asked after Revon was near her. Yesterday, she heard from Vano that Ravon had not fully recovered. I was at home earlier. Have you taken your medicine? I did. That's good. Don't be difficult when taking medicine, Sharon advised. Reven smiled at that. He touched Sharon's head and ruffled her hair lightly. Revan liked the attention Sharon was giving him. Vano and Vian looked at each other for a moment, seeing Ravon's sweet interaction with Sharon. I don't know. It felt a little strange to them. Maybe it's because they're not used to seeing it. After watching for a while, Vano and Vian finally chose to say goodbye to leave for campus. It was like they were saying goodbye to their parents. Wait, Sharon might be their parents too. Vian has changed. He pays a lot of attention to me, Sharon said. She remembered what Vian had done to her this morning. Revan was happy to hear that. Yes. Maybe he's trying to make up for his guilt towards you, Reven replied. Sharon smiled at that. The burden on her heart was slightly lessened when she knew that Vian had approved of her relationship with Ravon. Now, Sharon was just waiting for her father to come to his senses. What did you do for Vian to change his mind so quickly? I thought I'd have to hide even longer to avoid seeing him. Raven exhaled softly at that. His hand moved to embrace Sharon's shoulder and rubbed it gently. Sharon did not yet know the big secret that lay between Revan and the twins. Someday I'll tell you, but not now. Revan said, telling the secret that she had been hiding for more than two decades was not going to be easy. So Revan chose to tell her everything later after the situation improved. Sharon would definitely be very surprised if she knew everything. Sharon and Revan characters are not mentioned in this paragraph. Sharon and Ravan continued to chat on the waiting chair and occasionally entered the ICU room to see David's condition. There was no sign that he would wake up soon. And seeing her father's weakened state, Sharon was overcome with fear. Even so, Revan always tried to calm her down. At Tenham, there was a call from the police, and Sharon was asked to come to the police station. This was the second call and the police wanted more information. They were trying to investigate the case as best they could. Anton's non-confession makes it difficult for Sharon to get justice, not to mention the insider paid by Anton's father. Reven, of course, escorted Sharon to the police station, not letting her go alone. Reven testified again, and the police seemed to doubt his testimony. After their business was done at the police station, Revan and Sharon intended to return to the hospital. While still in the parking lot, Revan contacted someone. He asked him to find out the ins and outs of Anton's life so far. Hopefully there would be some enlightenment that could add to the evidence in court later. I've hired a lawyer and am trying to gather evidence of Anton's crimes. You don't have to worry. I'll make sure he goes to jail. Revan held both of Sharon's shoulders trying to calm the girl down, 
Revan was happy to see Sharon again, after two weeks of separation and no communication. But unfortunately, things were not going well. Thank you. I owe you a lot, Sharon said sincerely. She was happy to get help from Rivan. Otherwise, Sharon didn't know how this case would have gone. Don't say that. I'm glad I could help you. And I'm happy if I can put a man like him in jail. Reven then got Sharon into the car. They were going back to the hospital, waiting and accompanying David, with their hearts praying that David would wake up soon. Reven was not a company leader who was seen going back and forth to the office to work, but he was the owner. He only monitored without intervening, entrusting the leadership to his friend Darren. Even so, Reven is not someone to be underestimated. He has a lot of connections, and because of that, Revan could easily get information about Anton. As it turns out, Anton does have a bad personality. When he was in high school, he was arrested by the police for using drugs. He was released, however, because he was bailed out by his father. Even as a student, Anton committed several crimes, bullying one of his younger classmates until he broke a bone, bullied several women, and even verbally abused his female lecturer. Knowing all this, Revan was determined to try and put Anton in jail. Sharon wasn't his only victim. She was the umpteenth victim, who had the misfortune of having to become a half sister Anton's father's connections were just as strong, so despite being reported many times in the past, Anton had always walked free. But for now, Revan would push him to the end. He wouldn't spare a man like that. Even if he had to spend a lot of money, he would. Clearly, Sharon's safety was more important to him. The trial went on for a long time because Anton's father had hired a famous lawyer. They had tons of arguments to counter the evidence of Anton's crimes. One of them was to turn Rivon into a suspect because he had beaten Anton, causing him a minor head injury. Sharon was worried when Anton's lawyer said that. She was afraid that Revan would get into further trouble. However, God did not turn a blind eye. No matter how hard the lawyer hired by Anton's father argued to try and free his client, he was still defending the wrong person. And the truth will always be the winner. The judge decided to punish Anton for multiple charges. Not only did he harass, he also committed violence and attempted murder. Anton was sentenced to more than 10 years in prison and had to pay a fantastic fine too. The trial was closed and Anton was immediately taken by the police into custody. Sharon couldn't hold back her own tears. Hugging Rivon, she thanked him many times for helping her. Sharon was also relieved that Rivon was not given any punishment for eating Anton, because the judge considered it a defense of the victim. Rivon and Sharon walked out of the courtroom together, their fingers intertwined with a look of relief on their faces. Now, Sharon would no longer be haunted by the fear of Anton that plagued her. Anton was already in his rightful place. 